So I got Arya of Skindred. How are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. Thank okay. you for having me. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. So I'm going to try and ask you some questions that maybe you were not asked before. Okay, okay. this is brave. <laughs> okay, <laughs> going to try. Okay, um, so I know that usually when somebody presents themselves, they use a specific part of their personality. So when you say, hi, my name is Arya, I'm A, what do you use? What do you present yourself as? Well, when I introduce myself. Yeah, so you've met someone that you've never met before. Not necessarily a fan. I would say my name is. And I am A. Is it your profession? Is it your faith? Your love of food? I'd say I was a musician. Okay. Yeah. If they asked me, if it, if it was like, hi, my name's Aria, I'm a musician. So that's what you like to describe yourself as? Yeah. The profession? Yeah, as my profession, yeah. And what would you add to that? Wow, okay. Something that uh, a, new, a new friend needs to know about you. I'm a very kind and loving, trusting person <laughs> with a lot of love to give. Okay. Mm. So a lover. A lover. Okay, great. Not a fighter. Okay, and if you do meet fans, yeah. what's the easiest thing you can interact around? Um, it, when you meet fans, it's usually you, you try and bounce off them rather than yourself. It's like you try and give them the opportunity to ask a question they may not you know, have been able to ask. It's sort of more, it's more for them than it is for me. Does that make sense? Is I want to be able to obviously give that to them if they want to have choose to spend their time talking to me, then it's really how they decide the conversation will go. If they just want to meet you and shake your hand, that's up to you. If up to them, sorry. So it really depends on the fan, to be honest. And how do you react to compliments? You blush a little <laughs> bit. You blush a little bit. I mean, it's always lovely to hear nice things, but I think uh, you, it, when people say they enjoy the show, it's like, thank you very much. I don't think... With this kind of stuff, at the end of the show, when people are drunk a lot of the time, it's like, yeah, oh, you're great, you're great, you're great. It's okay. Like, thank <laughs> you, thank you. But a sincere compliment is always met with, uh, you know, sincere thanks. Okay. And Big Things was released two days ago. Two days, yeah. Okay. And I was watching the documentary for uh, Rude Boys for Life. Okay, cool. It was released just around volume. Yes, okay. yeah. And I saw um, the part about you guys recording think volume yeah. and the one before that that there was a part about the kind of difficult part of recording yes there were a few disagreements always was it really difficult to decide to release that part um not really because it's it's part of who we are and part of what we do it's always been there it's no surprise you know it's... it was a surprise for me because really I think not many musicians talk about that part okay well yeah i mean for us it's it's, it is part of it. It's always been part of it. You've got four guys with four different opinions and four different, you know, ways they want to do things. And so you're going to butt heads. And that's just the way it is. If you can uh, shake hands and have a, have a hug afterwards, and that's why we're still here. But a lot of bands can't. And they have these problems. And then, you know, they break up after a few years. I mean, we've been together for almost 20 years. So Was it easier? To... Was it easier for big things? Um... I don't think it was easier. I think we were more um, streamlined with what we wanted to do. I think the writing process was more intensive. And yeah, there were fights, but recording, we were pretty much, we knew where we wanted to go. And we did it in a short period of time. To, so we didn't have time to sort of get it under each other's skin. Okay. And have you yeah. watched a documentary? I've watched it. Oh, I put it together with the um, with the guys, so, so I, I edited it. So have you <laughs> learned a lot about either yourself through the eyes of the guys or about the guys? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, because I went through all the footage, so I was looking through it with the editor guy, and I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's cool. It's all stuff I'm aware of. You know, there wasn't too many surprises for me. Okay, so did you know that you're the energy behind their live show? Yeah. Frankly, according to the guys. <laughs> I, I did, yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's what I do. That's the, uh, you know, you get people dancing, get people clapping. It's the heartbeat, and, uh, you know, everyone has their different roles in the band, and... Uh, I was pretty, you know, obviously touched to hear them say nice things about you, you know, but I think, we, you know, we say this stuff to each other all the time anyway. You know, we're pretty lovey. So what was the part that you left on the uh, floor of the editing room? Um, I mean, you know, there was some, there's a few fights here and there. I mean, I don't know if they got it on camera, but when I punched Mike a couple of times, <laughs> you know. Just the usuals. Yeah, usuals, fist, fist fights you don't really want to see too much on there. Okay, and talking about the video that was released recently with the big cat. Yes, that's, okay, that's my, my jam. jam yeah. yeah. Who came out with that crazy idea of just cats? Oh, that was me again. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I met my wife, I had to adopt the cat. Okay. It came with the wife, and like, and I never liked cats. <laughs> I, I hated them. I like dogs. 
And last, and when I met my wife, it was like you know she was the cat was part of the uh, part of the picture, and so I became obsessed with them after that. So I'm it, totally into it. And we um, and when I came up with the name Big Tings, I was like I just had this idea of like this kitten blinged up. Then the designer put the sunglasses on. And I was like, well, we have to have that for the video and try and make that come to life. And me and Steve Clark, who um, filmed the, the video, came up with a storyboard. And uh, basically, all the all the people are in it, my friends. All, everyone in the video is my, you know, we've got our PR in there, we've got my best mate Matt, I play a character in it, the dancer we know. So yeah, everyone's, uh, you know, it was just a small family and we went out into London for two days, apart from Patrick Bergen, who, uh, the actor, who mm-hmm. was friends with our manager. Yeah, it was great. Okay, and there's a rumor online that there's another video coming out and it's going to be a tribute to the Naked Rammstein film, the Mann gegen Mann. Is that true or false? That's the first time I've heard naked? of that. Where did that come from? I cannot confirm on the nine anything. Where did that come so, from? Is that true? No. No, so you guys are not going to get naked for the video. <laughs> no way. Okay, well, some are happy, some are sad. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wouldn't really mind too much. I don't know if some of the boys would be into it, but... <laughs> well, I've seen uh, Benji get naked on your documentary. Yeah. At he, least once. Yeah, he doesn't mind. You know, I'm not sure the other guys do too much there. <laughs> Okay, and we're going to go a bit serious just for the ending. Things are happening around stages and on stages as well. Some fans are getting a bit too personal. Mm. Do you always feel safe on stages? Yeah, predominantly. I mean, it depends on where we play. I mean, we've had incidents. I mean, when we played in Prague, someone threw a knife on the stage. Big fucking knife. And it was like, whoa, okay. That's and like so- to show love? What was that? I have no idea. Okay. No idea. So it was a bit freaky. Yeah, it was like a big, you know, I don't, who, who brings one of those to a show? Okay. And why would you throw it at a band anyway? So not sure. that kind of thing, you're a bit like, okay. In the UK, I, don't, I never think about it. I never think about it. So when you go somewhere else, it's not home, because this is home. So it's like, it feels, you're safe, aren't you? Well, you sh- should be safe. You should be safe everywhere, but you feel safe when you're home. And I think, you yeah. know. America, we were we you know we were touring when Dimebag was killed. We played the venue, you know, a few uh, months before, mm-hmm. so we we're very aware of that. We went back to the same venue to play, and I felt weird because it was like you know shit's gone down. I mean, even in Europe. I mean, a few weeks, a few months ago, uh, Manchester. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and obviously Paris. Just well, a we year played ago. here. I think the when night you of played Paris. here, yeah, oh, exactly. Paris, I remember yeah. that. And our agent. Um, was here with us and he was um he is the Eagles of Death Metals ag- agent as well. So we got a phone call while we were playing to say what was going on. So yeah, so that was yeah. I don't think it's gonna stop anyone doing what they're gonna do. So what about fans and fans? Do you feel like fans should feel more safe? Because I know people are talking about groping female fans um and just being nice to each other as fans. Yeah, I don't know where that groping stuff comes from. That's weird. I mean, when I used to go to a concert, I don't remember any of that going on, so I don't know if that's a new thing. But Well, some shows have been stopped by the bands. So yeah. I think Architects were the last ones to stop a show pointing out a fan that was not being kind to other fans. Yeah, so, you know, you should feel safe in the crowd and feel part, have the unity. There shouldn't be any weird opportunist people trying to make people feel shit. Okay. <laughs> you know, it goes to people when they're moshing, you know, it's... Pick them up. Everything should be fun and safe. You're going to get a bruise or a kick, maybe, but that's about it. You shouldn't be expecting to be groped. That's disgusting. Okay. Mm. And kind of around that corner, do you feel like the metal scene, the rock scene, is still a boys' club only, or is it changing? Should it change oh, more? It's definitely not a boys' club. Definitely not. Not when you've got bands like Creeper that have Hannah in the band, or Marmosets, or Milk Teeth. These bands coming up, employed to serve. You know, that's just. New, you know, four new bands that will have females in them. So, so are we there, or we just still need to work on ourselves? Oh, we still always need to work. Always need to work on ourselves. I don't think you, you know. Never settle. If you settle, things get boring. You know, you got a motor on through. I think you know, with women in music, it's just the beginning, isn't it? It's always just the beginning. You have talented people. The cream always rises. You know, that's if it's good, it's good. That's the way I've thought about it. Okay, Aria of Skindred, anything else you want to add to fans and listeners out there? Thank you very much for listening to me, and um, I hope you enjoy Big Tings. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, dude.